Hey guys, welcome to Friday with Springfield Leather. We are back with Spencer with some braiding. So for those of you that missed Wednesday, um, this is an additional video. We are still working on our three foot long snake whip, whip, snake whip, you got it. our snake yeah. whip. I'm going to get that one of these days. Um, so I'll just recap a little bit. So last on Wednesday, we did the complete first belly, first belly, first belly of this. It's the three layered yes. situation mm -hmm. that we've got going on here. And so yesterday Spencer went through and he created the second belly, which is the exact same as the first one, but longer. Yes. So it just pretty much encapsulated the first one mm -hmm. the same way. Did we, do you yeah. want to go over, maybe just kind of go over mm -hmm. the measurements here? There. Okay. So for our very first layer, I guess for the very first layer, we had the BBs. So if you didn't catch that, um, we took a piece of paracord, took the center out of it. It was um, like, uh, I don't know. It was three feet. Three feet long, because that's the whip that we're making. That should yes. be easy measurement. So we had a three foot long piece of paracord and then the first 11 or so inches. 17. Oh, 17 inches. It was 17 inches because when you put the BBs in it, it'll shrink. Oh, it shrinks. Okay. It shrinks. Down to like 11? It'll shrink down to 11 to 12. So okay. we're in there. So you end up, so we stuffed BBs down the paracord until it filled up about 11 inches yep. or 17 inches of paracord, but it shrunk down to yep. about 11 yep. inches of BB length. I don't know, whatever you want to call that. And then we started braiding over that section with our first belly. So that first belly consisted of um, how many of these strands? These strands. Yes. So it was four strands. You had two at five and a half feet, one at four foot, and one at two and a half feet mm -hmm. long for that first belly. And then for the second one that he finished um, yesterday that had eight, six strands, six strands, two, three, four, five, five, be, five strands, if I can count today, yeah. five strands. Mm -hmm. And these are all folded in half. So you had, right, right, they're all folded yeah, in half. So you had eight, folded in half. you know, that you're braiding with, but but for continuous length. And then this one is uh, ten. Yeah. I need to drink this coffee today, guys. <laughs> um, so you had two strands at eight and a half feet, one strand at six foot, one strand at five foot, and one strand at three and a quarter feet for that second layer belly. And so we've got it hooked up here. Mm -hmm. If you were here on Wednesday, this looks exactly the same as what we finished with, just longer. Yep. So, exactly. yep. So what are we, I mean, where, where are we at here? So with our second belly. It should be just under three feet. Complete. Just under three feet. Just under. We're at 33 and a half inches, 34 inches. 34 and a quarter. 34 and a quarter. If you're technical. If you're very specific about it. It don't matter. So, yep. So that's where we're at now. So now we have got our third layer, which is called the overlay. The overlay. Mm -hmm. And we've fun Spencer's found some fun colors, you know, to match our beautiful shirts that we that yeah. we have now. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing this final. So one thing to note, it doesn't matter what colors you use for the inside because you're covering them up. Yep. So whatever colors you want to use for those first two layers. If you want to use ones that just make it really easy for you to braid because they're really contrasty, then super go for that. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got some blue and yellow cord here today, so we're going to be making the Springfield Leather Whip yep. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want it, you can have it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, so, sorry, I guess let's just get going. Is this what we have today? Yep, those are the strand lengths. Those are what we've got today. So I got two 11-foot strands, one 10-foot strand. One seven and a half foot strand, one six foot strand, one four and three quarter strand, one three and a half strand, and one two foot strand. Woo! So it's going to be 16 strands. 16? Yes. So eight on each side. We're going to be dropping that two foot one pretty quick. Mm hmm. Yeah. Really quick. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. And then for this, the pattern I'm going for, I flipped over. One of the strands, so you got a yellow and the blue and the blue and the yellow. I see that. It makes a little stripe. I'm gonna make a stripe. Make a stripe. We're gonna give our snake a stripe. Snake. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. So we pretty much have a lot of the same things that we had last 
or on Wednesday for this, but we have added a staple gun. Yep. He tells me this will come in handy at some point. Yep. So we'll be using that. And then we also have glue today. So a little good old contact cement. When we get to this part, you guys can ask me for the hundredth time what glue is in this bottle. Then we'll answer that question okay. again. Right. <laughs> for the hundredth time. For the hundredth time. All right. So I'm going to start it exactly how I started the other two. Take half of our strands. Back. Take one side, bring it over the top. The other side, bring that over the top. Tony, you want to go to the... Yes, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So around the back, and then I brought this side over, and this side over, so we have this little cross in the front. Make a little loop. Open that up, so we have a loop right here. Take blue side. Nope, you got, you want that one to be tight? No. Loops. All the all loops. Of, all of them. Gotta loop around everything. Yep. It gets kind of finicky with more strands, so. Look, I could do something today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't know which one I had. Yeah, let me get some keys. So just all four of these through here. Like so. And this flat strand I flipped around, Ooh. that's a real short one. That's the little tiny one. Yep. That's our two-footer. And the strand I flipped around was a uh, one of our longest strands, so we can carry that pattern all the way down the length. Of mm. the so this is the one time that that matters. Yes. Now pull that tight. Pull down until we meet. This always makes me feel like you're about ready to like tie a tie. This little section right here. Yeah. <laughs> you tie a lot of ties, Liz? I had to tie one last weekend, but I hadn't had to do that for a while. To get this established, we're just going to do like we normally do the normal herringbone flat. So. Since this side points up over here, we're going to take one off the top one off over here, bring it around, or we're going to go under four over four. We've got nice even numbers right now. Exactly. And then once again, if you are using like solid colored strands and you don't have these like two tone strands, you would just tie a knot in the center of each of them to make sure that your centers are where you need them to be. Yes. Okay. Over four. Paracord knots up really pretty tightly yeah, into itself tight. so it doesn't doesn't create any weird bubbles or anything. Yeah. Plus, I assume we're gonna cover that up with a Turk's head knot today, we guys. Are, if, we, if we get that far. <laughs> if we get that far. We'll see. We are gonna attempt to do another one of those. It's gonna be great. Yes. This should be bigger and easier. <laughs> so we tried to do that really tiny one on that hat band and yeah, it was, it, was it was fun. With dark string. <laughs> All right. Spencer won't call it fun. Yeah, it was... <laughs> All right. So I just did a couple. Okay. A couple. That's all you need because you, you don't like want to go. Before. Four. Okay. One on two on each side. So now we're going to do a double diamond plait. And that it's a lot simpler than it sounds. Okay. So you're basically going to take the top strand that this that you're Last strand plaited points to. We're going to take that around the back. We're going to go under two, and then over two. So under two. So you're kind of weaving. Over two. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Under two, over two. Just like that. So we had six strands on this one side. Under two, over, under two, over two, under two. Oh, I guess there's eight strands. I can't count yes, today, guys. There's eight strands. Yeah. And then we're going to take another strand from the same side because it's a double diamond. Oh. And do do the, the, and follow the exact same thing. Do the same. And why don't you do them at the same time? I mean, you could. Okay. But it, sometimes they can get twisted. Like these strands will lay on top of each other like that. And you want them to lay side by side. And you want to lay them side by side. Gotcha. And then we're just going to take the top two over here now. Do the exact same thing. 
under two. Sometimes it gets quite confusing. Over two, under two, over two. This is why you take the core out so they lay nice and flat. Yes. I've also heard of people people ironing them. Oh. So they lay even flatter. Getting real fancy. Yes. But you have to be careful that you don't melt it as you iron it. Uh, I just put it down at a low temperature. The iron. I suppose that's true. I also don't iron very often, obviously. Just like that. Okay. Continue. So now we're still going to go under two, over two, under two, two. And one thing you do not want to do is pull these back strands tight straight out because that will leave you with a herringbone on the back side. Uh, so you want to keep those strands and they'll eventually work themselves straight down so they'll be falling straight down. Okay. And you want that or else you'll end up with not the, pat not the same pattern all the way around. So you don't want to force them to do something. Yes. You just want to let them do what they need to do. Exactly. Got this one is twisted a little bit. Maybe we set just something. And this will go slower than the regular plat. Just because it's a lot more <laughs> time because you have to go under over. Yes. And the single diamond takes even longer. Because it's under, over, under, over, over, eight times. And then you get them twisted and all tangled. <laughs> and you have to undo it and redo it. I feel like you've experienced that a few times okay. in your life. Yes. Especially if you're doing like a 12 inch handle. Uh huh. It all has that on it. I'm straining. That's a pain. It takes like. Three hours to do it, eight inch handle. Woo! So. So charge a lot for your braiding. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to pull these quite tight. Well, this is our last go around. This is, this is the final. This you got to make sure this final. looks good. Yep. I mean, those bottom layers look pretty legit, guys. They look they look real nice, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't matter. You don't see them. Don't matter at all. Here, Stacy, there's squeaking his foot around. Yeah, what's going on? He probably has his headphones in and can't hear us. <laughs> he's let, he's watching it live on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's everybody doing out there today while we get into our braiding trance here yeah. this morning? <laughs> Anybody working on anything fun? Have some fun weekend plans? I think he's squeaking his little chair more now just because he's that something. <laughs> now he's like squeaking away. <laughs> Not even flinching. <laughs> you know, squeaky. Wiggling <laughs> <laughs> is like squeaking around out there. We're gonna be going. Like, <laughs> it's done now, right? It's like a little dolphin over there. <laughs> Corner. Anybody <laughs> got your WD forty? Right. Grease your shoes up. All right, so just to reiterate, we are doing a what? A uh, double, double diamond. A double diamond. Double diamond. And then we've got one one mystery thread. Yep. That is opposing. So like right, you've got this one right here. Is. Yeah, you can see all these are yellow. Stripe. Yep. Except that one blue one and then one yellow on this side. And we started out with 16 strands, mm -hmm. eight on each side. And now we are going from the top 
over two, under two, over two, under two. Over two. Over two. Yes. Under two, over two, under two, over two. Yep. And you do one at a time to make sure everything lays correctly as you pull them through. Mm -hmm. And then you just take your time. A lot of time. A lot of time. Because look, he's already, he's working out a little kink. He had one that was upside down. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure they lay good. Maybe spending the extra time ironing them isn't terrible. Maybe not. I haven't <laughs> tried it yet. So, I'll just try it sometime. Man, I thought, I thought my macrame patterns could get pretty crazy, but uh, this is out doing that. We're getting pretty close there to going down to 14 strands. Yeah. yeah maybe like halfway there. As soon as I hit it, it said no memory card. Bring it. There we go. Oh, that's a good angle. Look, Tony does know what he's doing sometimes when he sets up cameras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seems familiar. Yes. Yes. That's that. Uh, it's hard to know questions to ask when you don't really know what's going on. So he said, you can tell this is new territory for us. Intelligent questions <laughs> only come with experience. You can ask stupid questions, too. We'll take them. That's how you learn. Yeah. Kevin says, no questions are stupid except for ones that are unasked. Exactly. So let's see here. Marcus says, and I was proud to manage the double loop lace. <laughs> it looks like I'd end up with one huge pile of cord while inventing new cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, this vice. So this is just a Harbor Freight vice, mm -hmm. right? Just a not not expensive guy, but definitely nope. have something to hold your work in place so that you can you can really yes. yank it around, hold it tight. You don't want to have to try to hold that and braid at the same time. It, yeah. Or tape it to a table or something. It doesn't work great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you get straighter lines. I was going to say, so especially straight, having it up. Yeah. Straighter line down the center. Yeah, working with it flat on a table seems like that would be terrible. Yeah. When I did do my macrame, I would just take a safety pin and hook it to my jeans, which I think is the way that most 15-year-olds <laughs> did their macrame. <laughs> uh. I, Angela made a comment here, and I was going to make the same comment, and I would have to say that there is dumb questions you can't ask. <laughs> <sighs> Let's hear. Marcus said that he missed he missed Wednesdays, and then asked if we we're using gutted paracord. And yes, yes, everything that we're doing is gutted, except for when we put the BBs back in. Well, <laughs> we're still took the guts out. We just had a different guts. <laughs> we just put in new guts. Re gutted. Ooh, there's a stranger here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's not sure who we're talking about. Come on in, Kevin. Really? What's going on? What we're, kind of questions you got, Kevin? <laughs> we're being oddly satisfied watching Spencer braid a whip. That looks like, to me, <laughs> the worst possible use of spaghetti that I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Are you going to come in here? Here, come on over. Are you just going to stand there awkwardly? Anyway. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get in the way. We're gonna get you stuck back here. That way you can stay It'd be real and hard tell to jokes and get in the way of today. Welcome, Kevin. Everybody, I'm sure they're all applauding at home. Hello. I see your beautiful face. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know anybody could do that. <laughs> so what do you have to do? Keep doing the same thing over and over again? Uh, pretty much. Oh, except we're about to change it up. So. Well, I don't want to even be a part of this. No? <laughs> no. You know, the most complicated form of working with lace and stuff like that is in the morning when I tie my shoes. <laughs> well, that's not true. Well, I guess I can do that double loop thing. Yeah. Yeah. I do that. While driving. 
well, yeah, I can do that too. But on the highway at 80 miles an hour, he double loop laces. So now you know the other side of Liz. <laughs> She's a blatant liar. <laughs> I've been in those cars, Kevin, in the back seat. Well, one of us is given to stretching the truth now. And again. <laughs> okay. So anyway, sheesh. That, that just looks like a lot of uh, mental work. Are you not down for that? Not today. No. <laughs> it's Friday. Maybe that's got something to do with it. I don't know. It's probably because you didn't have your coffee this morning. I don't drink coffee. I never have my he coffee hates it. in the morning. Well, I'm glad you can do that. I'm glad somebody can. Because it ain't me. <laughs> oh, hey, Angela has a question. She says, I have a lot of weird scrap from ugly bundles that I have no idea what to do with. What would be the top weight I could make lace out of to try this? Uh, well, actually, you can make lace out of out of any of it, really. It's just that some of it is going to work better than others. Ideally, if you're wanting to do some kind of braiding on this order here, ideally, it would be in the four to five ounce range. You can use heavier but uh, it's not so happy a lot of yeah, times. Get lumpy. Uh, have you ever braided with leather? I've not had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you made, you've done whips? Yep, a couple. So did you find that it works a lot better when you have the ability to bevel the edges of the strings? Oh, yes. He yeah. has a real shoddy mechanism for doing that, too. Yeah. Is it in here? No, it's not in here. Oh, okay. But at least, <laughs> at least with those remnants, you can, uh, you, you can practice. That's kind of a good thing. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I don't think you've been able to answer this question yet. And we get it every time we, we bring glue in, and it's kind of a running joke. You want to tell us about the glue that's in this bottle? It's sticky. <laughs> what, what, what do we need to know? So, so every time we have a contact cement in here, everybody's like, what, what do we have in this? And it's a whole big spiel about the contact cement that we put in those bottles in the shop. It's Van Grip. It is. Well, that's what it is, Van Grip. And you really can't buy it. I mean, you can. You have to call. You have to pour yeah, it. Yeah, you got to call. You got to pour. It's a really big pain in the butt for us. The only reason we buy it is because we can buy it from the glue manufacturer in very large quantities, and we can pour it in itty bitty bottles like this. So we can. It's cheaper that way. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to bottle glue on my own. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I have bottled glue for years here at when Springfield Leather was smaller, and for some of you guys that have been around a while. If you ever bought Neo Weld, man, I poured it. And that is horrible. Did I mention that's horrible? You did. It's not good. I think you just said it. Is there a trick to choosing the width to cut lace based off the ounce or thickness of the leather? Um, yeah, sort of, kind of. But it really comes down to knowing the leather that you're working with. If you've got a thin piece of kangaroo, for instance, you can make that narrow lace, or you can make it wider lace, or you can make it really wide lace. That stuff is strong. It just has got a lot of tensile strength. But if you have a piece of cow, and it's really thin, the same thickness as the kangaroo, perhaps, and you get up around the flank a little bit in that leather, well, that's just going to stretch and pop in a heartbeat. Uh, it's the same with goat. Goat actually can work pretty good as long as you stay out in the main body of the hide. Lambskin is absolutely terrible unless it's been <laughs> tanned in a very firm manner. Then you can braid with it to a degree, but you're not going to be able to braid certain things. So this guy could probably tell you more about braiding than I ever could. But I do know one thing, and it's whatever you do, if you're not a and a seasoned braider, whatever you do, you're going to be experimenting. So you get that in your head, and that's just the way it is, and you'll be smarter the second time, and you'll be smarter the third time, and on and on. <laughs> All right. Well, Kevin, I think Spencer's got some yep. some instructioning that he needs to do here. I'm leaving. Okay. Go, go have fun with your bundles. Farewell. Bye, Kevin. Au revoir. <laughs> all right so now we're going to go back into our herringbone plaid and to do that without 
making a slant in our diamond. Okay. So if we just go straight back into a herringbone, there'll be a slant and it won't be a clean cutoff. Okay. Of where our diamond ends. We don't so, want that. No. We, we want, want a clean cutoff. We want clean. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go under two, over two, no, sorry, under two, over six. Oh, okay. That's just for one. One. Probably. Under two, over six. So just automatically, we just stopped doing what we were doing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then we're going to take it from this side now. Do under two, over six. Like so. And then we're going to go back into our regular herring wheel. Okay. It makes it a little more even. It's not perfect, but it'll make it more even. Gotcha. Otherwise. Which is under four over four. Yes. Okay. So at what point, why did you decide to do that where we're at? Uh, because we're going to need to drop these strands pretty soon. Okay. And it's hard these to do right that here. when you're doing the double. Yeah, it's, it's hard to make it look clean. Gotcha. So now we're just going to go under four over four. Just like that. Just like that. So this should go faster now. Yes, quite a bit faster. Spencer, do you do social media? I do, occasionally. <laughs> is it is it personal or do you braid on it? Uh, It's mainly personal. Okay, guys, we won't share that with you. <laughs> if you find him, good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or good luck to find him. Let's see here. James wants to know if you're right or left-handed. I am right-handed. Sorry, guys. Just Denny is that southpaw. Nope. Oh, no. No, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of southpaws in this room. I think Chad's the only one that's right-handed. I am. We yeah. are. Yeah. I'm there besides you. We don't live in this room, so apparently we don't count. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> this is the inspiration station. The fun center. I... <laughs> We just come and go in the fun center. We don't live here. We have fun twice a week. We'll allow you to be in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Oh, so guys, um, so Kevin said that he actually wanted to do a video here shortly and do some figure carving um, for you. So I think here, Tony and I are going to get that scheduled into the next week or two on our videos. So for those of you that are interested in seeing Kevin do, I think a horse is what he said he wanted to do. So kind of keep your eyes peeled for the notification on when that video is going to happen. It will either be on a Wednesday or a Friday at 11. <laughs> we can tell you. We can tell you that. We still have so many people that call and say, when are your videos? They're on Wednesdays and Fridays at 11 Central Time. Ooh, look at that one stripe. Mm -hmm. So are you going to switch it up again, or is this going to be what the rest of the handle is, or the rest of the whip? This is what the rest of it is going to be. Okay. But you can make collars and stuff. If you do a lot of things. You wish. If yes. you wish. <laughs> I have not done, well, I have done this. It's been a couple of years. But. Liz. Yes, sir. What did we have yesterday? We had an awesome visitor come yesterday. Um... It was a good time, wasn't it, Spencer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really good. So, oh, how can I make this really exciting? <laughs> I this up. It just doesn't really get too much more exciting than, than saying, saying this guy's name. So, um, we had Shep Herman come down. Well, maybe we should yesterday. put it there. Because people who people know who Shep Herman is, yeah, who might be with. So, then, <laughs> Anybody know who Shep Herman? got a guess out there about who Shep Herman could be. 
Let's see who can type the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> it should be somebody on Twitch because the latency is quicker on there. Oh. Which means they're mm -hmm. watching closer to real time. They're not bogged down. Let's see if you you Twitchers out there know know about this Chef Herman guy. And he was the first one to answer. <laughs> Yeah, so that was a really awesome um, visit. He was here for most of the afternoon yesterday. Um, he had a really awesome time with a, a large group of our staff. We sat down and um, he just spent like two hours, two and a half hours kind of going over Herman Oak, um, what they do, kind of how they've been an industry leader for so long um just kind of educating us and and a lot of our staff here about the leather from there um and just kind of the leather industry in general and we recorded as much as we could until our video cameras we came have out. All of it. do we have all of it mm -hmm. okay good we've got all of it i was worried for a minute mm -hmm. but um we did we did wear a lot of our cameras out mm -hmm. they needed to take a break literally they were like we have overheated and we're done and they just turn off. But anyways, so we've got we've got a lot of that um, to kind of edit through and, and put together a little spiel. I know that Tony's going to be working on that here for the next um, couple days or maybe a week or two, um, and get a get a nice video together that we can release for you guys. I'm trying to decide at the moment if it's, if I'm going to do keep it the two hours or hour forty five. I'll probably split it up into like segments. So I may see what it looks like when we all get done. But there was some really great information of just how to be educated on Herman Oak, but how the leather industry has been evolving and changing. And yeah, it was a really, really awesome um, two hours. And then he just kind of hung out here and saw he hadn't been to, uh, down to Springfield Leather in probably about eight years. Um, so we just looked at a lot of rocks. <laughs> we we burnt some leather on retail, which was a lot of fun. I actually have a picture of Chef burning a piece of, of leather. <laughs> so... We can we can talk about that too. Yes. We we learned that there's a really simple way to see if a uh, leather is full veg or if it contains some chrome or n not even necessarily chrome, just some other type of, of um, tannage other than vegetable tan by you know burning it to a crisp, which was a lot of fun for me. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. I think yep. you're about to drop something. I am. I'm about to drop the first two strands. That little baby. Just a little bitty guy right here. <laughs> and this guy right here. So you're going to drop them at the same time? Yep. And so I've plaited two strands past, so there's two strands in front of it. Okay. Like that. So it's all holding together? Yep. It's all holding it together. And instead of just leaving them like we normally do, we're actually going to pull these to the center. Ooh. Like so. Just like that. So we have our little, two little tags right there. Okay. Then we're going to plot a few more times. And now it'll be uh, under four over three. You always do more on top. Yep. And another way you can tell is you see these three strands right here is are like separated from each other. They're not touching each other at the base. And these four are. You want to take that top strand and separate it from the rest. Oh, okay. So you want to separate that one strand from the rest, and that helps whenever you're doing like a 20 strand braid or whatever. To know where you're at. Yes, instead of counting every time. Nice, nice. So you always have one fewer separated than the amount that you need. Not necessarily. One. No. No. I'll, I'll, don't worry. I, don't. You'll, you'll, you'll so we'll see. You'll see. Take that back. Yes. Or somebody else. Don't listen to that. <laughs> so it looks like as you're going, I mean, you're, you're pulling the one super tight. So like these right here are not really tight, but as you braid that strand in next time, you, you can snug see. that up. Yep. Okay. So don't worry if, if some of these are loose up in here. Yeah. Until you get to that one, it won't be snug yeah. yet. There's actually a lump here mm -hmm. of loose strands, and then these ones are tight all the way up. So now 
plotted a couple more. We're going to tighten up those strands we dropped because they kind of they kind of stick out a little bit. So we're just going to grab it, give it a gentle pull, so it seats in a little better. Both of these. You don't want to pull it super hard, so it like pulls down. You just want it to match the other. Yeah. Tightnesses of. Mm -hmm. Nice. And when we roll it, if those aren't quite tight enough, the rolling will even out the tension and flatten them out. Gotcha. I was wondering about that because all of our other little ends were burned down, which you can see on the outside. Yep. So this conceals all of that. Yep. Let's see here. Jeff asks, how well do these paracord whips work compared to leather ones? Uh, depends who makes them. It's all in the craftsmanship. They can be as good or if better than leather whips. Hmm. Because if a person makes a leather whip and they have no idea what they're doing, uh, it's going to be way worse than a paracord whip that someone knows what they're doing. Right. And they can last just as long and be just as good. So it's really up to what do you want. Sure. I tell you what, though, it, when you use like the the brown or like the natural colored paracord, once you get that thing waxed, it almost looks like leather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's that one was rust color. Rust, okay. Rust. So the one that we had in here the other day, it was rust colored rust paracord. Color. Yep. Yeah, until you get up close and you can see like the texture and the strands from far away, it totally looks like a piece of leather. Mm -hmm. So who's Andrew? That's my brother. Oh, okay. That's my brother. You stole his tackle box? Yes. <laughs> yes, I stole his tackle box to put all my stuff in. <laughs> nice. Yes. Is he younger or older? Younger. Oh, yep. stealing your little kid's stuff. Oh, my brother. Swipe his stuff. Yeah. I don't have any younger siblings. Which is... Oh, okay, so you're the oldest of five. I have an older sister. Oh, that's a lot of kids. Yes. I was the youngest of five. So you got it easy. I, yeah, <laughs> that's what they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I don't have too many memories of that black snake. Because mm. <laughs> I was the youngest. Supposedly, my, my siblings tell me my parents gave up on raising me. They just let me do whatever I want. Yeah. So, yeah. I turned out okay, I guess. <laughs> oh. That looks really cool. The pattern coming out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can do a bajillion different patterns. So you could, you could mix them up and have, like, if you had the same amount of yellow and blue cords, it would just be alternating all the way down, right? Yeah, so you could like have a section of blue right here, and then a section of yellow next to it, and a section of yellow, blue. So it's kind of like a... almost like a... Section. Like a checkerboard? Yeah, okay. like a checkerboard. Yeah, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. and that's what the little stock will. Oh, okay. Your, uh, not quite, actually. It wasn't quite a checkerboard. Just kidding! Yeah. <laughs> And if you don't drop the strands strands at the same time and you like say you drop a strand and then you go a couple more and you drop another strand your pattern will uh get lopsided oh. if you do an even pattern because so like, you'll have an extra cord yeah. on one side so this blue one and this yellow one eventually the blue one would still be there but the yellow one would be down here gotcha okay so you want to drop them at the same time yeah. if you doing a pattern. Actually, since we're getting close to dropping these strands right here. And if we drop a strand with the amount we have now, we're going to have a double strand, which is two strands sitting next to each other instead of each one cutting off the next one. Why? Uh, because whenever you drop a strand, you drop this strand right here. Mm -hmm. And then if you do, you'd be going under four over two. Gotcha. Then you don't want that because you have to separate this strand from these strands. And you don't want to do that. So, what you do is you take it out, you flip it over. Ooh. I don't think we've ever seen the backside of our braiding before. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have a camera underneath the table. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. So, clamp that there like so. And then we're going to take our strands and just kind of take it apart. Seems treacherous. Just a little. Just so you switch the sides. So I'm taking all the blue ones and bringing them around the back and bringing them to the other side. Just like that. So now, you just unbraided... Did you... I unbraided one revolution. Okay. And now if you look, only these two strands are separated and these four strands are not. Yep. So now we're going uh, Tony, under... Can you go to the one on my left? Yeah. There we go. All right, there. So you see these two strands are separated now. Yep. And these four aren't. So we want to take this top strand separated from the rest of them. So now we're going to do an under three over four. Yeah. Okay. And that'll prevent you from having a double strand. So when you drop it, you drop your next strand. Uh, once that strand goes, it'll be under three over three. Okay. So that, yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. A little bit. So how, how long did it take you to learn how to do that? <laughs> um, like just after you braided for a while and you're like, oh, that's wrong. And then you have to go back and fix it. Well, I've seen a video huh? on that. Oh, good. Like, oh, so that's how you get that out of there okay and so you made the decision to do that because you're getting close to needing to drop strand yeah this strand right here is getting pretty short okay about six inches so we're gonna do that to prevent it from but you still strand. but you still have some braiding left to do yes okay This is just going to take practice, guys, to mm -hmm. be able to do this, especially when you start the patterning thing. Yeah. Once you get it established, it should flow just like any other braid, you know? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I trust your experience. <laughs> And you will get blisters. Many of blisters. If you don't get blisters, you're not pulling it tight enough. <laughs> but they have like those like silicone finger things. But although that you can put on for like hand sewing, but I don't know if those really prevent blisters on your uh, on here. Some people wrap their fingers in electrical tape. Mm -hmm. That makes it or hockey tape. Hockey tape is multi-purpose, guys. Yep. Wrap your fingers and your hockey sticks and your hockey sticks. Just don't do them together. The playoffs are going on right yep. now. It's getting pretty exciting. Can you wrap your fingers to your hockey stick if you want to? <laughs> I don't know if I would suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let go. I'm getting there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could start some sort of a blues band. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very repetitive. I know. Yeah. yeah, there's not much to talk about. Let's see. Spencer, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Probably fishing. Nice. Where do you go? Uh, you can't give away your fishing spots? Well, everybody knows oh. the fishing spot. Probably go down to Taney Como. Oh, nice. Trout fishing. Mm, for those slimy, floppy fish? Yes, the slimy, <laughs> floppy fish. We were talking about fish right before the video started, and he said those are the slimiest and the floppiest. Mm -hmm. 
I said, that sounds lovely for somebody else. Do you, do you eat them after you catch them? Uh, not normally. No? You just put them back? Yep. So it's really just a pointless activity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. That's okay. Get that. I'm excited. I'm going to hang this thing in my office. <laughs> Somebody walks in with a problem, that would be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure are you sure you have this problem today <laughs> have any more questions ask the whip <laughs> I have to work tomorrow so if anybody wants to place their orders with me I will be here answering phones that's my beautiful Saturday yep So when when are you gonna pull those to the front? Um, do you do it when they're at like a certain section or? A... I could probably do it now. Actually, if it went back one, it wouldn't be bad because another thing you're looking for is the angle of your strands. I don't know if y'all can tell, but this is uh, more like this, and this is more of a steeper angle. Mm -hmm. If you can see that, and so once they get in steeper and steeper, you wanna. Drop, drop strands also because then that'll if you get them like super straight it'll end up with like a very stiff whip oh, okay so i'll probably just go back a couple drop did you did you ask that question that's up there liz yeah uh, we already talked mm -hmm. about it so i just went back one and now the strands are in in a place where we can drop them what place is that? Well, this one is. But nope, never mind. They are not in a place we could drop. Just kidding. Yep. Now they are. So now they are in which position? So this one is two back. Okay. So we got two strands here, and this is the third one. We got one more behind it, and this is the one we're going to take up. And this one is the second one. Which we can honestly just go like that and take one more off that one. So now they're both the second one. We're just going to bring them down to the front. Do you always? So why is that position okay? But why is that? We'll just explain why you do it with them as the second. Uh, because you don't want them too far back. Because if you have a it too far back, the the you'll. Does it not look correct when it's pulled forward? Yeah, it'll it'll fold up and create a lump. Okay. So you don't want them too far back or else they'll do that. But they can't be the first ones because then that would be awkward to... Yeah. That, that wouldn't work That wouldn't did work. the first ones. Okay. So, so, so second is good. Would third be okay? Uh, it depends on what your plot count is. Okay. So... Please. So it could, for this plot count, would that be okay? The, uh, it's okay if it's the third one, yes. Okay. Continue. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, have you ever braided rawhide? I have not braided rawhide. I don't... You... Uh, I'm assuming that would cut up your fingers pretty bad. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Yes. But also, it would be the straightest whip that would not crack. Yes. And it wouldn't really do anything. More like a stick. <laughs> You'd have a rawhide <laughs> stick. Yes. So I've seen, I saw a knife sheath that was um, braided, which, I mean, that that would be fine because it's like a solid thing. I don't I don't know if you could, a rawhide whip doesn't make sense, but you can braid. I don't think so. It was, uh, it was horse rawhide and it was super fine. Those strands had to be like a 30 seconds of an inch wide, like super tiny, but it's rawhide. So it's super strong. Mm -hmm. And um, it was probably the most beautiful little, the, the handle had been um braided as well on the knife and it had little turk's head knots on the top and bottom or some sort of a knot that they had braided with the the horse rawhide it was pretty cool actually you work with it when it's wet so it's probably just slimy like your trout 
Probably. <laughs> It'll dry and shrink, and then you end up with a stick. <laughs> and then you crush your knife. That is, I think Denny was telling us a story one time, one of the first times he worked with rawhide, and um, he made a lampshade, and he didn't really take into account uh, the shrinkage of rawhide, and he put it around this metal frame of this lampshade, and then he, you know, stretched it as tight as he would a piece of leather, and it just crushed that lampshade when it dried, mm -hmm. just folded it up. Whoops. And then it was a, <laughs> a shade ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a show last <laughs> night. Sorry, <laughs> it was on. It was on PBS. We downloaded the PBS app so that you can just mm -hmm. kind of watch. Your I have that downloaded. Television. Yeah. There's a show on there, the, like the building of Branson. Oh, really? that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's usually the only reason people come and visit us is because they're going to Branson. We have some visitors. <laughs> let's see if they'll come. Let's see if we can get them to come in. No, they said no. No. <laughs> We have windows on our door, so you can see you can see them through the windows. But anyway, it was a good, it was a good one. And there's another one that's called uh, like Life by the Waterhole. Hmm. And so they made this waterhole in African, not the, not the Serengeti, but it's a different reserve. And so they just made this man-made waterhole and set up a bunch of cameras, and so you can just hmm. watch the life come up and. Talks about the animals that came and get to see a big lion and the change of people that come in and how the hyenas kind of scare everybody off. Would you fit in the hy hyena category, Liz? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. 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 J.D. Leatherworks says, hey, Liz and Spencer. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I oh, know. just hey. Yeah, just hey. What's hey, up, dude? John Deere. John Deere uh, Leatherworks. John Deere. I don't know. I don't know either. Do you make things that are green? <laughs> <laughs> green and yellow? Green and yellow, green and yellow. I'm going to clip this one a little shorter oh, because that's too this. that's too close and it'll make a little dip. We don't like that. Nope. I want it as smooth as possible. Stagger that guy a little bit. Yep. I assume we're going to burn it a little yep. bit. Burn a little bit. There was some fine gentleman on retail yesterday that we sh that we, we borrowed a customer's lighter so that Chef could burn leather. Because <laughs> <laughs> none of us have one um, on our person. Mm -hmm. But and then and then that customer had to leave, so we had to give him back. So we had to find Tommy in the shop and we stole his lighter. Because all the shop guys are pretty good about having lighters. That was a lot of fun. So if you guys are ever curious. If you have a piece of leather and it's supposedly veg tan, but you're questioning it or you just want to confirm that it is because you've got a customer that is very specific about their needs, um, you take it and, and a chef said a butane torch is best just because it'll get the job done a lot faster. Um, but you basically sit there and you just burn all of the, the collagen away until you're left with whatever tannins are in that leather. And so you burn, like we took a piece of probably eight to nine ounce veg tan and we just burned until it shriveled up into this tiny little crispy end. Um, and if it looks like a burnt tree, like all black or possibly even a little bit ashy, but mostly black, that's vegetable. Those, those are your vegetable tannins that are left. Um, if it comes out with this little kind of like blue green end on it, those are your chrome tan. Uh, that's your chromium. Mm. And it's the more, you know, yeah. Yeah. So we took a piece of oil tan and it was definitely green on the end and it smoldered for a really long time because it's oil tan and it had a lot of oils in it. So I just kind of held this little like triangle of oil tan leather as it smoldered mm -hmm. all over retail. It's like this little incense thing. <laughs> It just smelled like some burning leather. Like we were back at the laser room. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so if you need if you need to know whether or not you've got veg tan, that's that's how you can do it. Shep says he's got a little ashtray that he uses and he'll just light it on fire and use a butane torch and just let it smolder away and then um, if it comes out with a, a green blue tip, 
That means it's got some chromium in it. Um, we had one piece of leather that had like a little white tip at the very end. And so Shep was like, well, it doesn't have chromium in it, but it's got something else that's not just straight veg. He, I mean, obviously he didn't know what it was. We're not doing he chemistry right there. Right. He's an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was not 100% veg. So, I don't know. Learned a lot yesterday. Had some fun. We, we burned a lot of leather yesterday. <laughs> it was a good time. That was not on film, so I don't have any of that. No, we don't have any of that. I do I do just have the one picture of Shep with the lighter burning some leather. I was behind my little sound wall here, and Liz was being the quietest that I've ever heard her be for an extended <laughs> period of time when I come around. It's because I'm not on camera one. She's trying to find the picture, I think, at the moment. I, I was emailing Tony those pictures. Oh, you emailed them to me? I sure did. Oh, why don't I mean, you, you can hold your phone up there. Don't get any, don't need to get any text messages. <laughs> Hopefully people don't interact with you. I just sent them to you. I don't know, but okay, so where? Where? Okay. Uh, here, you hold it there. I get, I forgot. This one's on manual focus. So we've got just Shep burning a piece of leather. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've got. Uh, yeah. We did, uh, we did a lot. We tried his heritage leathers. Which I think is that that specific picture is burning his heritage leathers. Um, that's a good one. I sent you a picture I got of him and Kevin when they were in the show. Oh. Having a conversation. We carry the heritage. What's what's how's the heritage different than just the regular Herman Oaks? So the heritage is Herman Oaks' new um, upholstery leather line that they've been. Um, R and Dean and and released here this this past year. So, for all intents and purposes, Herman Oak has always just been kind of straight veg. They've done some drum dried drum dyed leathers, you know, their bridles, and and they do make a um, a latigo, but um, they've never really gotten into soft leather upholstery leather style. So this past year, they came out with a really awesome line um, of milled water resistant upholstery leathers so they've got that i think it's four or five colors guys you correct me if i'm it's four or five colors they've got a black a tan um chestnut and a brown i think a chocolate color so um a nice three to four four to five ish weight um sides that are milled and then they've been infused with uh a special compound that they've come up with to make them as water resistant as you can get a piece of leather and it's pretty it, it'll ball up on top and it won't penetrate i'm i'm sure if you left it there for quite some time you might get a little bit of, of penetration eventually but uh it's pretty darn water resistant which is really cool um because most veg tan is its job to soak up water so that's pretty neat we've had a lot of people have been enjoying that for the last couple months here Okay. Ready to drop another strand. Woo! Mm -hmm. Check it back in with Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing as all the other ones. So we're dropping strands there and they are in the second position? Yep. Okay. Because now we only have three, so they need to be in the middle. Okay. Of them three. Should pull them down to the center. Oh, right, because the three that are left that are still connected. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. These ones are kind of long, but that strand was a little longer. If you see, that was pretty close to the other one. These these two are pretty close. So I'm going to drop the shorter one a little earlier than the end of the strand, so we don't drop four strands at like the same time. Sure, that wouldn't be good. So this is this feels right. This moment to drop feels good. Yes. 
like we talked about in our video on Wednesday, you kind of, when you, when you decide to drop a strand, it's really when it feels right, when, when you need to get that taper, um, in the correct spot. Yep. So, you don't just necessarily wait till you run out of, of cord. We had a question is where is Denny? Probably somewhere in New Mexico. Yeah, he's not really checking in with us right now. Mm -hmm. He's not worried about what we're doing. <laughs> no. not... He probably doesn't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> oh, the last time he did go on vacation, he went on vacation and he was out at Yellowstone and him and his wife are, uh, woke up in the morning. He's like, I'm supposed to be back at work today. Oh crap, today's Wednesday. He's like, uh, <laughs> she calls in and goes, hey, I'm going to be in there a couple of days. I'm still <laughs> in Yellowstone. Yeah. I'm sure he's having a wonderful time wherever in the world he is. I think he was going to Colorado to his old stopping ground somewhere. Yeah. So you can learn about where Denny is going in our videos from last week. We should have put like a GPS tracker on him and then put where in the world is Denny on our website. Mm -hmm. That would have been pretty good. Next year. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So it seems familiar. Sends us a little message. So hubby has a leather apron that looks like it is a split. Uh, can only see the flat sides. And only the flat sides are brown. They're brown where it was cut. You can see the inside is white. I forgot what that means. Oh, um, so basically it's probably a chrome tan. Um, I mean, if it's a, if it's a split of some sort, uh, like your suede leathers, most of those are chrome tan, unless you specifically buy veg tan, which, um, you would know. And so basically just that white line, um, chrome tan leathers are finished and then they go into these drums and they get dyed. If they don't stay in the drum long enough, then the dye doesn't necessarily penetrate all the way through. So um, it's not necessarily a bad thing uh, to have that, that chrome line in the middle. It just means that it, it wasn't struck through um, while it was in the drum. And that's, that's kind of, sometimes you have leathers that are advertised as struck through, um, like our drum dyed Herman Oak leathers. Those are struck through. You'll have color when you cut that, um, when you cut a piece off, you'll see, you won't see that line in the middle where they, where the the dye stops um but honestly it's 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 not necessary it doesn't really do anything to the leather it just means that it wasn't in the drum long enough for it to to be dyed all the way through so that's just the chrome line russell says that we're awesome on the phones well we added something else this week thanks russell we did add something and the girls totally asked me if i was going to talk about this and i was like i don't i was like i won't bring it up but i can't control tony so, and he, <laughs> so girls if you do watch this liz did not say anything to me i'm just looking for something <laughs> to talk about and i love to talk <laughs> So we did. So for those of you that really prefer to shop on our website, um, we have added online chat. I don't know if we're doing it today. We've kind of had a bit of a crazy week in the office this week. Um, and so we're, we're down a couple people, but we are going to be trying more and more frequently to have our online chat open. So for those of you that are shopping and you have a quick question or you're struggling to find a product that, that we should have, you can now send us a, a quick message if that little box pops up with the online chat and we can get you taken care of, hopefully uh, maybe a little bit quicker than giving us a call. So so look for that. It'll kind of be, we're, we're trying to start implementing it as we've got the um, customer service staff to do so. So use that to your advantage. Yeah, it'll pop up on the lower right-hand corner of your screen and it does it on mobile as well. It just says live chat when it's up there. It looks like mm -hmm. a little chat box thing. Like like most other people have. Yeah, it'll come up. I mean, it'll be there, order, disappear if it, you know, if it's there. And then if it's not there and you go, just scroll to the bottom and if you click on the um the phone number or call us it will actually send you a say hey do you want to call this number so oh nice yeah you don't have to you don't have to type it in or anything just click on it it'll, say, it'll start dialing the 1-800 number we're so fancy tony i know i try <laughs> not bad for a gym teacher <laughs> <laughs> how's it going spencer it's going good we flipped it over again because we're going uh under three over two and if we drop a strand in that configuration, we will have a double strand. So we want to flip it over before we drop a strand. Gotcha. Flip it over. Mm -hmm. 
You get all your strands come in the correct way. And then you just continue. Under two, over three. How those blisters going for you? Pretty good. <laughs> you always get them in between your fingers too. So mm. that's really fun. Yeah, that seems terrible. I, I messed it. Oh, you messed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he made a discovery. <laughs> He discovered that a few braids ago he messed up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> does, any, does anybody ever make that discovery when your hand's going and, and you really get into a groove and then you look back like two inches ago and accidentally you skipped a stitch and then you have to pull out all of your threads? That's always a that's a sad discovery mm. when that happens. <laughs> How long have I been fighting you to get the online chat? Um, since COVID, really, it's been it's been more pressure. Yeah, when I well every month, I ran it for a while when I was at home when I worked yeah. at home. That was what I. Yeah, yeah. So after that, when Tony when Tony came back from his home life, the chat disappeared. <laughs> Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody it was it was like me and two other people in the office. It was me and Lindsay and and Jen had come back. Oh, and I think Christy Christy yeah. was here. And so, uh, and I was like, guys, there's four of us, and there's a there's eleven phone lines. So I did not accept that challenge. I was not on board. But now, but now we have when everybody's here and and not at home, we've got ten people in our in our customer service office right now. And I apologize. Rick, they are not all ladies anymore, and I have to get used to that. So, oh, sorry, Rick. Yeah, sorry, think. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got we've got ten people right now. A lot of them are new, so we are working on training as much as we can. But uh, we're we're pretty excited. It's a good group in there, and and ten is only one less than the number of phone lines that we have. So we should be able to accomplish a lot these days. Getting good. Spencer, how's it going? Done your sewing mistake, Liz. Oh, good. Glad I'm not the only one. You look like you're getting to another short one. Yep. Yep. Probably drop it mm. next time it goes around. Pizza's not yummy. We had pizza yesterday. Since mm. Chef was here, we ordered pizza for Marcus over in Germany. They're gonna they're moving Italian for tonight. Mm. They're gonna go get some pizza. The kids are begging for pizza, so he said he was checking out early. Nice. <laughs> Enjoy your pizza, Marcus. I mean, I guess we're at an hour and hour and eight minutes. Ooh. We're just gonna get this this last one done here. Got those last ones. Everybody, just stick with us for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then I guess we'll continue on Wednesday with our Turks heads, or the whatever finishing. Yeah, we do have a fall hitch. Mm, a fall. fall hitch. So this strand down. So it's in between the three or two on each side. So that pull that down. And this one's outside for some reason. I don't know why, but <laughs> it is. So we're gonna have to do more to get that in the right position. Doesn't really matter. So now it's in the right position. And then we can drop it. Pull it down. Okay. So as long as you just don't go back all the way around again to braid it, you won't get a weird yeah. um, design. Yep. Okay.
bowl. Let's see here, Dave. I'm trying to dye veg tan with Peeping's Yellow Pro Dye. I don't know, but it is not dyeing yellow or anything close to that. My question is, is there anything I have to do to get it to look somewhat yellow? Um, I mean, it depends on, like, are you, first of all, David, are you thinning your dye at all? Um, the, the Phoebe's dyes are quite concentrated, and honestly, like, airbrushing them is going to get you the, the least amount of pigment for the amount of area that you're covering, which is kind of ideal to, to build that pigment up. So it might be that you just have a lot of pigment going on, which is making it really dark. So try um, reducing your dye with either dye reducer or denatured alcohol also works to, to reduce dye. Um, if you don't have any of Phoebe's like actual dye reducer on hand. Um, and then it's probably not ever going to be super bright yellow just because, and, and that'll depend on the, the veg tan that you're starting with. So if you've got a piece of import veg that's a really nice bright white color, you're gonna get a much lighter yellow tone. If you're starting with Herman Oak or a darker tannage of leather, it's gonna be harder to get that bright yellow. Um, Tony just went out and grabbed some of our new uh, Fenici dye swatches that we did. So we've got, I'm assuming this is Herman Oak versus Import. Correct. Okay. So I'm just going to do, so on this side, this is our Import. So that nice uh, bright white leather and the yellow Fenici uh, water-based dye that we started carrying here last year. And this is the, the Herman Oak. So it's just slightly darker. Um, but we've really found with like a lot of your, your bright colors, the, the water-based Fenichis really um, are coming out with some really nice tones. So... But definitely try reducing it to use the dye that you have um, and maybe applying it in, in thinner coats than what you're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Strands are dropped. Okay. On to the next one. We're getting so close. Yeah, I'll probably have another. I guess that is actually quite a bit. Yeah, we'll probably have past. another two feet another two Some, feet uh probably not two feet more like i think it's going to be slightly longer than three feet so maybe like a three and a half to four foot snake yeah something like that whip snake whip they're never exactly the same <laughs> oh yeah i was asking spencer so he was really awesome for those of you that um you know if you wanted to make an eight foot whip um, he got us some dimensions or some lengths of cord that you would use. So I don't know if I want to read it off here just because it's a lot of numbers to write down, but we can definitely, um, put a post in that if you were wanting to do what he's doing with, or make an eight foot whip, these are the lengths of cord that, that you would need to start with for your first layer, your second layer, and then your overlay. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of that. It looks like you would need in total about 83 and a half yards you could get 90 yards or 90 85 maybe because mm -hmm. that's a very specific number <laughs> the number i came up with <laughs> so about 83 and a half yards you could get 85 just to be safe get 90 to be even safer well that's already safe oh that's already safe yes that's mm. already safe that's 50 feet above safe Ooh. okay so that's extra, extra safe so you could just do 80 if you wanted yes <laughs> you could but yeah, so we've got all that. So they can post that in the description for those of you that are interested in making a longer one. But you know, if you just wanted to try it out with a three foot, that's get your blisters going yeah. and then really set them in with an eight foot one. Feeling about things. We're feeling really good. Yeah. Do you want to? I'm going to finish it out. Maybe. We'll see. Does this finish? Oh, well, it can't finish like we did that because. Nope, it doesn't finish. It finishes in a four point fall hitch. Or you could do a taper twist. Sure. Or we're just going to do a four point <laughs> fall hitch. Typical. You're starting to run out of screen here. Oh. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
There goes Donnie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reminds me of like the ice cream trucks. <laughs> the Donnie Mobile. Mm-hmm. That's great. Our scrap management, gentlemen. We literally we produce so much scrap here in our shop that we have a guy that it is his job to maintain all of our scrap. It's a lot. He's a, a he's a great guy. We we wouldn't know what to do without Dondi, but uh, he has a little cart that is his little mobile workstation with all of his supplies to do whatever he needs to do with all the scrap that he manages. And so he was a uh, we have a lot of weird angles and corners here for those of you who have never been to our facility. Um, we have pieced together like ten buildings <laughs> out of a shopping center. We cut doors in wherever we can figure out where to cut <laughs> doors in, and so we don't exactly have like straight hallways to anywhere. So he's got his little cart, and he kept you know, running over people going around corners. Not mm-hmm. running over people, but in any case. So we got him a little bell to put on his cart so he could announce when he's going around corners. You know those little ant houses that you still buy? Yeah. That's what Spring for Leather reminds Abigail of. Is an ant house maze. <laughs> <laughs> did the find places you didn't know exist? <laughs> Is that like that... Was that Grandma's Mansion? Grandpa's Mansion? Grandfather's Mansion at Dollar City? Yeah, Grandfather's Mansion at Dollar City. With all the weird mirrors everywhere and the funky floors. Well, it's built on a hill. I haven't been there too recently in life. (laughs) (laughs) Too recently in life. I've been there in my dreams, but that's a real life. Well, let's see here. Robert said he just got done cutting my overlay strands. Hey, Robert, thanks for giving this a try. Um, if I wanted to keep the braiding simpler, would I, uh, would starting with my two colors on their own side avoid flipping the whip over? No. No, it doesn't matter what colors you have. I mean, you don't have to flip the whip over. It's purely aesthetic. So it's not necessary to flip it if you don't want to. It's just aesthetics. So... Instead of having two strands touching each other, you won't have that if you flip the whip over. And I don't have an example. I wish I did. But I don't of what that looks like. So. It's just where the strands are laying when you pull them to the middle. Yeah, it's when you drop the strands. And how they look after you plat over. Because it... Uh, let me explain this a little easier. All right, so I have three strands on each side here. And say I was going, um, let's say I have four strands on each side. Pull these back into the middle. And I'm going, well, that doesn't work either. Say I have five, <laughs> strand, <laughs> five strands on each side. Okay. And I'm going under three over two and I drop a strand. And now it's set up for me to go under three over one. But because you wanna separate that one strand from the rest. But that is not, it'd be very lopsided if you did that, very lopsided. And next time you drop the strand, you would be going under three over none. Right. And that wouldn't work. So in order to correct that, you would have to jump back a strand and go over a strand twice, which makes a double strand. So instead of, if you don't flip the whip over, you would be, you would go under two over two, but you would have that strand lay next to the other strand. Because it matters how many strands you have separated and then how many you have together. Yes. That's what we're looking at. Yes. Is your separated strands up here and then your strands together yes. for when you're dropping. And if you don't flip it over to correct that, you'll just have a double strand. Okay. It doesn't affect the pattern or anything like that. Gotcha. Makes sense? Somewhat? Hopefully, Robert, that makes sense. He said, cool, thanks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. All right, we want to end this last one and then we'll finish the rest of it off on it. My belly's getting hungry. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. we, we can get into here. Uh, what are we doing next week? 
We're going to do a fall hitch. Yep. And a Turk's head knot. I can take, I'll take it down to four plat and then I'll end, uh, and we can do the fall hitch and then do the foundation for the knot and tie the knot. Okay. That sounds good. So next week when we come back on Wednesday, he will have it ready to do his hitch part. So he'll just kind of finish up his, his braiding here. Yep. And, um, and then we'll do all of his little finishing things on Wednesday. Yep. And then, and then Friday, maybe we'll do something with Kevin. Mm-hmm. What does everybody want to see on Friday? I hope, I hope it's a horse set because that's what Kevin wants to do. Oh, doing the... Yeah, the figure carving. Doing the figure carving? Yeah. Let me show you what, let me show you what we're seeing right now. <laughs> we're distracted by a face in the window. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why we put doors with windows in this room. Yeah. So okay. when customers will come by, then they, we, we can let them see it. There we are. Right <laughs> 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 now. All righty. He must be wanting to go to lunch too. Yeah. I think that's what that was. All right. Thanks so, everybody. Okay. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend, guys.